Hello everyone. Hope you are having a fab time and enjoying binge watching Testflex. Today, I'm going to talk about dipping your toes into public speaking. The main objective of my talk is to get you all geared up to give public speaking a go. I know it is daunting and overwhelming. Then again, remember you are not alone. Imagine an auditorium full of nine-year-olds. There were around 30 students reading notes from their papers and trying to maintain silence. A couple of teachers were sitting in the front and listening to kids speak. It was a class addition for the elocution contest happening for the inter-school competition. It was my turn and I was excited. I started off well, but stopped midway. I was like this boy. There was an eerie silence as I stood frozen. My throat felt dry, no words would come out. The teachers tried to snap me out of it by saying encouraging words and uh, prompting me to continue from where I left off. Nothing worked and the bell rang, marking that my time was over. Another boy who was next in line came to the front to try out his speech, but I wouldn't budge. I was in complete shock that I forgot my lines. My speech was about the great Mahatma Gandhi and I knew my lines by heart. I had practiced my speech a lot of times and delivered it in front of my family. I was pretty sure I would nail it and then to forget it like that? It was embarrassing to say the least. One of my teachers gently dragged me from the stage and brought me outside as I have now started to shiver. She made me drink some water and then I started crying, like bawling. This experience scarred me for life and I started associating speaking in front of people with fear, judgment and embarrassment. I felt so helpless and I didn't want to do that ever again. Did you know more people fear public speaking than death? The famous comedian Jerry Shenfield said that in a funeral, people would rather be dead in a casket than do a eulogy. There are also statistics which say almost 75% of people have fear of public speaking, also known as glossophobia. Right. Then, why are you pushing a skeeter? I can hear you say that question. I would say public speaking is a life skill one needs to master. Your confidence levels will improve as you've done something very challenging, which many people can only dream of. Preparing for a talk is hard work. You have to read a lot, digest that info and give your opinion on a topic. Can you imagine I'm doing a talk on public speaking on Netflix, but if you search on the internet, there are literally millions of people who have already created content on this topic. So why did the committee allow this one? How is my talk unique? Why will someone even listen? It is unique because I am unique just like our fingerprints and all the wonderful things in nature, which makes each and every one unique. This topic is about my voice, my perspective on the subject, and hence, it is of value. You have to believe this, believe in yourself first, in your authenticity, because this is the first step to public speaking. Once you believe and get geared up for public speaking, you will get clarity on your thoughts, get better at articulating and communicating with people. Communication is very important in your personal and professional life. It could be one of those differentiating factors for a successful and fulfilling relationship. It could be for your promotion to gain respect, crack an interview, to lead, get buy-in for your ideas and much more. It also makes you human as you have to put yourself out there, be vulnerable and fight that imposter syndrome. The research and the preparation part of the talk also grounds you because you realize that you know what you know is a drop in the ocean and there is so much more to understand and explore. If you overcome all these challenges and then deliver a talk, it is a fulfilling experience. I can vouch for that. Next story is from when I was 12 years old. I still dreaded public speaking and my biology teacher, thank you Yashoda ma'am, gave me that much needed nudge. I am your classic front bed student, sitting in the front, attentive in class, taking notes, asking questions, like surprise tests, 
Yes, that's me, guilty as charged, teacher's pet. Yashoda ma'am had finished explaining a life cycle of something, think it was of an amphibian. She called out my name and told me to summarize the whole thing. I was dumbstruck and petrified. She said, I've already drawn the life cycle out on the board and you just have to explain it to the class. So I stood up from my desk, being in the front helped because I could just see her and the board, explained what I could and sat down quickly. He made me stand again, came closer to me and made me face the classroom and got everyone to clap for me. I don't remember whether I did a good job explaining the life cycle or not, but I knew my life had changed at that point. I felt light and a burden left off. If you're struggling like I was, find that person who would nudge you, push you out of your comfort zone and hold you up when you stumble. Surround yourself with beautiful and positive people who love you and believe in you. You are lucky if you have found them. Draw strength from their belief, even if you don't believe in yourself completely. Communities are brilliant as there are loads of support out there for first-time speakers. Many conferences have a section of slots for budding speakers. There are resources on how to write abstract. Community members help out with reviewing your topic ideas, your abstract, and even your talk. You can find a mentor and work with them. You could even present it in meetups and do a lightning talk or do something at work like a brown bag session to get accustomed to the idea of speaking in front of people. There are uh, online conferences too where you can record your talk and send it. So explore the different avenues, take a chance and utilize the available tools and opportunities around you. I wanted to improve my public speaking, so I joined the LDS club in college. It was called the Literary and Debate Society. On the first day, there was a great pep talk from one of our seniors about speaking in front of people. The one key thing which stuck with me was that public speaking is not for you, even though you are a key player in it. It is for your audience. And then he shared a lovely quote from uh, Lily Walters. I'll share that with you. It says, the success of your presentation will be judged not by the knowledge you send, but by what the listener receives. Know your audience well and make your talk relatable to them. LDS is also the place where I connected the dots and things started making sense. My intro talk in the club was about train journeys. I chose that topic as I loved train journeys and had loads of stories to tell. There were nerves for sure, but after I got into the flow, I could visibly see the audience enjoying it and relating to my words. This made me relax and gave me the validation and confidence to carry on. In my very first talk about Gandhiji, I didn't know him personally and, and I myself couldn't relate to what I was speaking. Maybe that was one of the reasons I forgot the facts and lines uh, I had rehearsed. In the strange journey talks, I was speaking from my lived experiences. My enthusiasm and excitement was getting conveyed in my tone, my body language, my facial expressions, and the audience connected with me. The feedback I received was that my talk was engaging and resonated with them. I figured that I'm a visual person and I can use it as my strength to convey my message. I heavily use mind maps during uh, the prep phase and lots of pictures in my talks. A picture paints a thousand words and it is so true. I also got to experiment with different types of public speaking. I'll classify them as like two main categories. One is where you rehearse and then present to the audience like delivering a talk like this one. Another one is impromptu, like being in a ask me anything session, a live session or like a debate. Uh, these need a different sort of approach, practice, a presence, and active listening skills. These are also a little harder as you need to be calm, respond to the questions, and not react. Once you master this type of communication, the conversations in office meetings, refinement, project discussion sessions becomes a tad bit easier. Right. Let's move on to the next topic. Yeah, there are no shortcuts to a great presentation. Practice, 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 practice your delivery, your posture, focus on breathing. Remember to pause and enunciate at the right places. One last story before I wrap up my talk. 
It was my first job just after college. I was quite comfortable speaking in front of people by this time. There was a training program for all the new joiners. And at the end of it, one person from the cohort of 40 members had to share their takeaways from the program. The person before me did a fantastic job. His speech was funny, emotional, and hit all the right notes. Everyone in the audience really liked it. The program manager made the 150 odd members in the room give a standing ovation to the speaker. Next was my turn. And I started panicking as it was a tough act to follow. How nay was I to think that my fear has gone away? I let my nerves take over and my speech fell flat. It was rushed and my anxiousness showed in my voice. This experience taught me to practice with distractions, live and breathe my presentation, analyze it in my subconscious and to be prepared no matter what. Most importantly, it helped reinforce the point that I shouldn't talk to impress, but tell the truth and be authentic to my own self. Have you uh, experienced this yourself when you talk to your crush or that important someone? Maybe it is a Zoom call and your boy, boss joins in. I actually attended a BDD workshop years ago. The speakers were doing a great job until Dan North, who is a pioneer in BDD, joined the session. How do you think the rest of the workshop went? Be mindful of the situation and expect the unexpected. And I have a, a little ritual before going on the stage. I sit with myself and take a few deep breaths, go to the toilet, practice my power pose, and just practice my opening lines out loud. Uh, and uh, in case you are wondering, what is a power pose? Let me show you a slide <laughs> explaining what that is. Main power poses which I, which I use, the first one is the superwoman pose. And then the next is the victory pose. I don't know how it works, but both of them makes you and your body feel powerful. So do try it. Just to sum up what we have discussed so far, fear is good. Do what you want to do in spite of it. Don't let fear paralyze you. Have that courage. Believe in yourself and find your cheer squad. Remember your speeches for your audience. Last but not least, practice, practice, practice. I want to leave you with this final quote from Ralph. All the great speakers were bad speakers at first. Thank you for listening and for your time. Thank you.